those hundreds of thousands of research papers were inspired by all of you talking about the importance of climate change. For what other reason would so many researchers be advancing this field, dedicating their lives' work to it? It's precisely your work that has inspired all of that. In order to make Eve happen, it requires several miracles. Um, as it stands today, as it stands today, Eve, without advancement in computing, Eve is impossible. Using traditional methods, Eve will be impossible within all of our lifetimes, which is precisely the reason why I think Bjorn got so excited and the Eve team got so excited. There are three miracles that has to happen. The first one is how can we take a traditional method of simulation, uh, increase its resolution to a couple of kilometers or a kilometer square. 30,000 simulated years per year um, would take about on the order, uh, depending on your estimation, nearly a billion watts, 750 million watts. Um, basically, every single data center on the planet would have to join forces uh, to, to even have a chance at doing something like that. Um, so obviously, we have to refactor the way computing is done, introduce a new method of doing computing. The second thing is, how would you even interact with that data? The pre-computing that is done to re even retrieve the simulation data to be able to interact with it uh, would, would be enormous amounts of data. Uh, and the third thing, of course, is how would you visualize all of this data because it takes pretty powerful workstations and supercomputers to be able to visualize the information today. How would we put that in the hands of policymakers, uh, businesses, companies, researchers, so that they could do what if experiments uh, at the regional level and to understand the impact of that storm, uh, maybe to their coastal regions, maybe to their uh, farms, maybe to their infrastructure that they're building. How would they even explore that uh, unless they have these powerful workstations and powerful visualization systems. And so these three miracles um, have to be addressed. And the reason why Earth 2 and Eve uh, found each other in the perfect time is because Earth 2 is based on three fundamental computing uh, breakthroughs. The first one is accelerated computing. There are two dynamics that are happening in the computer industry as we speak. The computer industry has been using a computing model uh, that is largely unchanged since the IBM System 360 was invented 60 years ago. General purpose computing has the benefit of Moore's Law for several decades, and as a result, computing has improved in, in performance every five years by a factor of 10, every 10 years by a factor of 100. And so at that pace, the world was able to absorb the amount of increase in computing demand while keeping the amount of energy that was used in data centers largely invisible to the amount of energy used on the planet until about the last couple, two, three years. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, data center compute, data center power has now reached about 2%. And the reason for that is because CPU scaling has ended and yet demand continued to rise. And so where NVIDIA comes in and the reason why uh, our computing approach is adopted all over the world is because we can deliver a quantum leap in computational capability while reducing the amount of energy used. The second area of contribution is physics ML. Using machine learning, using AI to learn the properties of physics, we know how to use AI to learn the properties of language, learn the properties of speech, but what if we also use it to learn physics? Modulus allows us to learn physics. Uh, along with that, we have to invent a new type of AI model to forecast climate. And the third is a digital twin system we call Omniverse. Let me just share with you uh, some of the progress that we've made there. Accelerated computing, this is a new type of computer. This new processor uh, took us nearly a decade to do. And we call it Grace Hopper. It's the world's first tightly coupled CPU and GPU. It makes it possible for us to accelerate just about any software. Uh, the first application of Grace Hopper is our climate software. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing ICON and IFS uh, running on Grace Hopper. Uh, the, the, the amount of performance is, is fairly insane, but let me, let me just show it to you this way. Uh, if you look at the gray bar, that's a CPU. That's one CPU. The light green bar on the right-hand side, that's one Grace Hopper. Uh, Grace Hopper can perform uh, these type of applications, and this is data analytics, vector databases, uh, basically a semantic database, graph neural network, large language model like ChatGPT. Um, it can perform these type of applications, algorithms, uh, substantially faster with uh, much, much better energy efficiency. 
Uh, for example, the large language model of Llama can be performed at 200 times better energy efficiency. This is not your normal computer. It requires the software to be rewritten for this type of computer uh, from the ground up. But if you're able to do so, the amount of energy efficiency you can get is really spectacular. This is what it looks like in a system. If you wanted to create a, a supercomputer out of this, uh, you take one Grace Hopper, you connect these Grace Hoppers using a special link that it connects the whole bunch of them into one giant computer. All of its memories are connected. It's one virtual GPU. 256 GPUs, 150 miles of optical cable, 40,000 pounds. And to the software, it is one chip. You program it like one giant GPU. We're building it now. We're going to try to use this computer to uh, simulate ICON. This is very, very early code. Um, I'm sure it's going to get a lot better. But on the left-hand side, it's 2,140 CPUs. It can simulate 40 days per day. On the right is 1,536 Grace Hopper, the super chip on the left. And we can simulate 722 days per day using the same amount of power. In both cases, it's one megawatt. The first problem that we have is in order to simulate 30,000 days per day or 30,000 years per year, we would need 750 megawatts. We can now do it 20 times better than that. Now, 20 times better than that isn't quite 30 megawatts, but it is very, very close. So the first miracle is we should be able to do that within about 30, 40 megawatts. Um, the second miracle is um, using AI. And we created a framework that is designed to learn physics, uh, learn the structure uh, of physics, and to be able to predict the climate. And we invented a model called ForecastNet. Climate researchers at NVIDIA uh, partnering with researchers at uh, Caltech. And uh, this model uh, is based on a neural operator uh, that's Fourier-based, Fourier neural operator, so that it can learn continuous functions and learn relationships from very large spans of time and space. And the results are very uh, physical, and it re reflects um, the skills of a good weather predictor and a good climate predictor. And so the question is whether these um, models reflect physics. And um, one way is to look at the realism um, and try to reforecast uh, historical extremes. This is Hurricane uh, Harvey, and you can see that the skills uh, reflect uh, climate behavior. You could also see that it has learned the physical properties of climate and of physics, uh, in this particular case, uh, the Coriolis effect. Uh, it turns to the right in the northern hemisphere and it turns to the left in the southern hemisphere. It also seems to uh, predict rather well the internal temperatures of the hurricane and the wind speed. Extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and severity. In 2018, the temperature in Algeria reached 51.3 Celsius, the hottest ever recorded in Africa and beyond what existing models predicted. The actual recorded temperature is shown here in orange. As you can see, the actual temperatures exceeded the 99th percentile shown by the dashed line. The yellow line represents ForecastNet's forecast for the daily maximum temperature. This is a 50-member ensemble from ForecastNet. That's the typical size of a numerical weather prediction ensemble, and it takes an hour for a large supercomputer to generate. None of the gray lines cross the 99th percentile. Because extreme events are rare, large ensembles are needed to predict them with any kind of accuracy. With a small ensemble, outcomes are simply missed. By running ForecastNet on NVIDIA GPUs, however, we were able to generate a thousand ensemble members in one-tenth the amount of time it previously took to do one, and with significantly lower energy consumption. Twelve members of that ensemble exceeded the 99th percentile and correctly predicted the heat wave. Here are the spatial maps of the heat waves predicted by those 12 ensemble members. Using AI, we were able to predict this high-impact event a full three weeks in advance. Tapping into GPU acceleration to dramatically increase ensemble size can give us deeper visibility into extreme weather around the world and valuable time to prepare. And so the second miracle is to be able to interact at very high resolution regional scales and a level of computation that's just simply unimaginable. 
five kilometer resolution would take 4,000 of the H100s. It would take about three days to train this model. And every time you want to inference it, you can generate a thousand ensembles at five kilometer resolution, probably better than that, uh, within about an hour. That is simply unachievable using numerical simulations, and you simply wouldn't put that capability in the hands of tens of thousands of people. And so AI gives you an or a three orders of magnitude uh, speed up in capability. The second big breakthrough is using artificial intelligence uh, to learn the properties of physics and use it for uh, climate prediction. Accurately visualizing current weather conditions in high resolution and at a global scale is incredibly helpful to climate scientists. Using NVIDIA Omniverse Cloud, we can look at an icon simulation of any part of the world at a resolution of 1.25 kilometer. Here, you can see the detail in the clouds over Taiwan, or thunderstorms over Africa that form as the sun rises and its light strikes the clouds in that area. Typical simulations today are done at 25 kilometer resolution and simply can't show these details. Observing the climate in high resolution at a global scale is a powerful tool, but it's also important to be able to show the impacts to specific regions or even to specific areas of a city. Here's a simulation of Ernst Reuter Platz in Berlin, where we can see how the size and location of buildings impact airflows based on data from Palm and volumetric data from ICOM. This simulation power gives architects and city planners insights into how they can design and build smarter, more sustainable cities, while letting climate scientists gain a deeper understanding of our changing world. We're building three types of brand new supercomputers. The one in the back is for training the AI models. The one in the middle is for simulating physical properties. The one that's in front is your omniverse cloud computer. These three new types of supercomputers are just now coming online. And on top of it, we're gonna overlay our Earth 2 cloud services that I showed you earlier, and hopefully be able to contribute to EVE.